Hey, hey. Uh, a lot of people have been asking what I've thought about some of the new releases that have just come out. Um, uh, I was actually in a podcast called uh, Transmission Awesome, where I mentioned that I was playing Fallout 3 a lot, and I would really like to get back to that. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is I mentioned the uh, Guitar Hero World Tour and Rock Band 2 and about how many of these are coming out. Well, I actually have played them both now. Not all the way through, but I do have some comments. I did not actually know that you can use the old drum set from Rock Band on World Tour, which is cool. I can also use my Rock Band guitar on World Tour, which is also cool. It's good to see that they finally got their heads out of their asses and we can just play the fucking game. Um, that said, the the World Tour drum set probably is a lot better, and it actually looks a lot more sensible, plays a lot better, I think, but I'm still not going to get it. Um, my comments on the song so far, is it just me, or is the song list on Rock Band 2 fucking stupid? I, I just, I, I, I've been playing like maybe 30 songs in Rock Band 2, and there's maybe four that I like. The rest of them I haven't even heard of! It's, it's amazing to me how few of these songs I've actually heard of uh, on the radio, anything else. Uh, I, I don't know how these go. I would never sing these songs because I would have to listen to them three times before I even knew the basic melodies and the words and how they go. I, I don't know. It just, it just seems like they're really obscure now and they're tr starting to scrape the bottom of the barrel. And it, it doesn't seem like they have to. I mean, there's so many songs out there that they could, they could pick just... Just in terms of like you know the the old school Bowie, uh, Aerosmith, that kind of thing. Uh, just all these songs I can think of. I mean, you could make entire you could make entire discs out of you know Ozzy or or uh, fuck I I don't know. But it I was just playing these songs and I'm I'm going through all these cities, all these venues, and none of the songs are even tolerable. I I don't get it. Um. And worse yet, in World Tour, I noticed that they're repeating a lot of the songs in Rock Band 2. So I, I must have played uh, Today from Smashing Pumpkins like four fucking times. I, I don't know. Is it going to be in every Rock Band game from now on? Is it going to be in every Guitar Hero game? It's driving me crazy. And if I hear another Jane's Addiction song, I am seriously just going to open my car door and start ramming my head into it until the pain stops. I'll just tell you this right now. And I know there's a lot of fans out there. Jane's Addiction is the worst band in history. Worse than, like, fucking Nickelback. I, I have never heard a more atonal group of screeching whiners. Jesus! That is radio! Why do people like them? It, it's literally like a penance that you have to go through for thinking unclean thoughts. Like... If you're bad, we'll make you listen to more of this rock music. No, please, God, don't. It's just that they're terrible. They've always been terrible. They've never made a song that was worth listening to because of their god-awful voices. I've never thought I ever could sing better than anyone else, except when I heard Jane's Addiction. It's that bad. Please do not put any more of Jane's Addiction. This is why we need to go to more themed songs, because you're never going to make everyone happy. You are never going to have a song list that appeals to everybody. And ironically enough, for me, it's always the modern stuff, the modern crap that passes for rock, that pisses me off the most. Uh, like, w when you start putting uh, AFI, and you start putting My Chemical Romance, Coheed and Cambria... Yeah, they've done some good stuff, but it's just not what I think of when I think of guitar classics. It's not what I want to hear in my game. If we tried to focus and tried to make it a little less general, there wouldn't always be those, like, five songs people bitch about on everything. You know, if we made a Van Halen uh, guitar hero, that would rock. I mean, if you liked Van Halen, you'd buy it. If you didn't, you, you wouldn't you'd be pissed off by the Van Halen thing. Anyway, the other things I've been playing lately, uh, Far Cry 2. This one's a little bit older, in terms of like it was out like last month, but uh, I actually enjoyed Far Cry 2 a lot, and then the flaws started to really shine through after about a day. Uh, I got through about a quarter of the game, and I started to really see these things that were annoying, will always be annoying, and th ironically enough, they would seem like they're, they're, they're problems that are really easy to fix, and they haven't. Um, in Far Cry 2... It's a much more open-ended experience. 
uh, you basically there's there's about three factions and you have a bunch of buddies who will give you missions. So most of the time these missions consist of go to this place and kill everyone there or there's a target in a motorcade running around out here go there kill everyone there it's pretty basic. But uh it's this big jungle and you're going to run around this jungle take cars if you want um drive around it's 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 open ended. So uh you're going okay cool fine. Um, it's good to be, it's, it's good to have a change of venue. It's good to be able to, you know, pick whatever weapons you want, run around in the jungle, and you think, okay, um, we're gonna have a lot of fun with this. So, and, and it's kind of cool sneaking around the jungle feeling like you're a badass, feeling like you're Arnold Schwarzenegger and Predator. Um, but here's, here's the problems. One, stealth, don't bother. There, you'll see, like, you'll be able to buy stealth suits for, like, I think it's 25 or 45 diamonds. Don't, I, I don't know why stealth in Far Cry has never worked. It didn't work in one. They kept telling you to sneak around and kill people with your knife. It, it didn't work then. It doesn't work now. For some reason, whenever you kill a guy, all of his buddies instantly know about it, and they'll instantly vector in on your position and start shooting at you. It doesn't matter if you manage to actually sneak up on the one guy and kill him with the knife, whether or not he got a shot off or not. For some reason, everyone knows about it. Everyone knows where you are. And also, no matter how well camouflaged you are, no matter how dense the foliage you're creeping through, if you're crouched or not, there's always one guy who manages to see you from 300 fucking yards and starts taking shots at you, which he will hit with his impossibly accurate rifle. I never understood why that was possible. Just... I guess it would make the game too easy or something, but you just shouldn't bother with the stealth. Um, the second and far more annoying thing that ruins the gameplay value, that, that ruins the replay value of this game, are the guard posts. Every time you encounter a guard post, and they're clearly marked on the map, there are people in it. What I mean is, you'll drive around... You'll encounter a guard post, you'll kill everyone there, and you'll move on with your mission, and you're like, okay, they need to throw in some encounters to make the missions a little more difficult. You want the feeling that the roads are being watched. And you're, uh, okay. But then every mission, every time you go back to that guard post, every single time, there's guys there. And they will always fight you, and you always have to kill them all. You can't drive past the guard post. You can't just blow past in your car and hope they give up. They will not give up. They will get in their Jeeps and they will chase you. And for some reason, their Jeeps are always faster than yours. They will catch up with you. And they will not stop until you are dead. So no matter what, you have to get out of your fucking Jeep. You have to kill them and move on. And, and so it's just, it's just busy work. It's annoying busy work, and it's very clearly busy work. It's like they're, they're just, we, we have to put bad guys out here. And I wouldn't mind ordinarily if the guard posts respawned every once in a while. It's logical. There, there are governments at work here. There are factions. And if there was an empty guard post, they would restaff it. But not in the same night. Give it like a day. Give it a day of game time before the guard posts re respawn. Give it a few hours but not every time I go back there. It's like every time I, I go any... Uh, if I leave like a hundred yards of that place and I go back, there's dudes there. It's just, it's, it's, piss, it's just pissing me off. And I can't keep playing this game. It, just, just make the guard post not respawn. But the big one, Fallout 3. I have been playing Fallout 3 like crazy. Um, almost like when I was playing Oblivion, which is the 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 annoying byline I always heard when describing Fallout 3 was it's Oblivion with guns. Yes, it does play a lot like Oblivion, but there's nothing wrong with that. I liked Oblivion. I played that one to death. Um, the one thing I, I I don't mind the fact that it has guns. It, it feels so good to come back to the Fallout universe. Uh, it it's just great to finally experience that in like a first person viewpoint it kind of feels like it's it's finally grown up you know um the the setting the characters the it it just feels really good to come back to um and for that alone it's worth playing if you were 
if you were at all interested by the premise, if you liked the previous Fallout games before, it's very it's very fun to play. There are problems, however, uh, just from a design standpoint. Um, the, I think the most common complaint I've heard, and I agree with it, is the VATS targeting system. What happens is, when you're under attack, you can push the V button. I, I'm playing on the PC, but you can you can kind of stop time for a minute, focus on a target, and it will highlight all the little target zones, like the legs, the arms, the torso, and the head. Um, it'll give you a percentage chance to shoot every one of them. So what you can kind of do is queue up attacks, and then the computer will automatically take control of your character and take the shots for you. And when you do this, you have a much higher chance of critically hitting the guy, causing more crippling damage, uh, causing greater chance of critical hits, things like that. Um, here's the issue with that. One, it kind of takes you out of the game. It takes you out of the sense that you are... It's a first-person shooter. It really takes that control out of your hands. I know why it's there. It's there because in the previous games, you would pretty much always use the, the, the targeting system to get critical hits. You, you wouldn't want to do it any other way because when the monsters got really badass when you were fighting super mutants and that, you kind of needed those critical hits. You kind of needed to cripple stuff to move on. Same thing here. Uh, you will almost always use VATS because um, the monsters move around, it makes sense to use VATS. The computer has a much better chance of hitting these locations than you do, and when you use it, you have a much higher chance of critically injuring the guy. So every chance you get, you will use VATS, and I think it kind of breaks that uh, feeling that you're in a shooter. Um, it makes you dependent on using the targeting system, which is not a good thing. Uh, maybe you'll disagree with me, maybe you won't. I just think it was... I, I understand why it's there, I just disagree with the notion of putting it in in this case. I think maybe there's something they could have done in real time, maybe to assist this. Uh, besides that, uh, I have never done anything other than shoot for the head in anything. I, I don't understand why you would shoot for legs. I've never fought... You know, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna blow your brains out if I'm gonna target anything. I'm not gonna go for the left arm... I don't know why I would go for that unless... Th I've never met an enemy that would focus entirely on having a sword. Maybe I would do it then, but uh, I've always gone for the head. Um, the other thing is, same with Oblivion. Uh, I don't know why they're so, they're so happy to let you pick up and search everything. Um, you can open everything and you'll, you'll find something in every box. You'll find something in every locker, but... I don't really want to carry a box of 20-year-old instant mashed potatoes. No, no, actually 200-year-old instant mashed potatoes. I don't really want to carry that around, thank you very much. I, I, I don't know why every time I open an ancient refrigerator I have to know that there's a box of like ancient uh, junior mints that I can carry around with me. Um, I don't really want to carry bottles of radioactive water around. Useful though it may be if I chose to take three perks to let drinking radioactive water slightly less stupid, it's still pretty stupid. I don't want to carry radioactive water around with me. I don't want to carry an ancient leaf blower around with me, um, although it's probably usable in some item construction thing. On the other hand, the items you construct are never a good thing. You, I can find pretty much anything I need. I don't need to carry around items to make better ones. For instance, uh, I, in Fallout, I always make the same basic character. I, I basically make a smooth-talking Pistolero who can shoot you in the eyes from 90 yards. Basically Doc Holliday from Tombstone. I don't know what it is. I just really like doing that. But uh, I never saw the point in making a martial artist. You know, like having Bruce Lee wander around the wasteland sounds like a good idea, except when you have gigantic radioactive mutants with, like, tentacled torsos coming at you. Stuff you really wouldn't want to touch with your bare hands. You know, uh, uh, ten-foot-tall super mutants. I wouldn't punch that. Um, and besides that, almost everyone you encounter has guns. Um... Maybe that's just me. Uh, although I did rethink that when I finally discovered the option to make the shish kebab, which is a flaming broadsword, which you can carry around with you. Although that romance was... It did peter out pretty quickly when I almost immediately discovered uh, a better weapon just laying on the ground called the Ripper, which is a... Uh, which is a... Uh, a chainsaw knife, which 
instantly did more damage than the shish kebab and was easier to use and less fragile. I don't know. Uh, the bottle cap mines. I pick. I I have literally like sixty five frag mines. I don't know what to do with. I don't need to carry around items to make more mines. I don't care if they do more damage. I'll just throw more frag mines down if I need to drop something. Uh, I don't need to make Nuka Cola grenades. I have a lot of grenades already. So the crafting, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, I think it was a big mistake putting any points into repair because using the workbench really hasn't paid off for me so far. Um, and I, I've never been that short of money that I couldn't just pay somebody to fix my armor for me. Anyway, uh, but it is a lot of fun. I'm just saying there's there's a few design decisions that that just don't really work and they're not worth putting your attention into, I think. Um, I, I think the game would have been a lot better off without VATS, but it still is pretty fun going into that bullet time and, and blowing people's heads off in, in slow motion. I guess it saved me the effort of manually aiming. And I guess if I really objected to it that much, I just wouldn't use it. I don't know. Um, oh, that's the other thing. Is it just me, or do decapitations happen way too frequently in Fallout 3? It almost seems like every time I shoot somebody in the head, their neck is made out of Twix, and their head just pops off in some glorious fountain of sludge. I don't know, it just seems like it's really too easy to decapitate people, although maybe you get a giggle out of that. Uh, also, the... The, the Sarah Palin wannabe who's who keeps giving you missions and oh it's so cute you're going out to get some stuff at the super duper mart I, I, I for some reason she doesn't annoy me as much as she probably should although I'm probably on the really short list of people who liked her um, but that's Fallout 3 um, if you're a fan you will still love it uh, if you liked Oblivion at all you will still love it uh, Actually, ironically, I went back to play the uh, the uh, the old Fallout and Fallout 2 games, and I was surprised at how uh, little I was able to get into those games. I know, it's blasphemy. I love those games to death. I still love those games. But there are some things that hold it back. And I, they didn't seem to be that much of a problem at the time when I first started playing these games. Um... And the number one problem for those games is the soundtrack is terrible. In fact, it's almost non-existent. Uh, the, the, it's just very low, almost inaudible, low percussion, low moaning sounds. Um, there's basically no music except for like small bongo riffs every once in a while. It, it's just... When the action picks up, the music doesn't pick up. There's no sense of urgency. There's no sense of action, no thrill in the music. So when there's a gunfight breaking out, the music does not change from the low, like, buto monks that keep just, oh. The music never escalates. Um, nowadays, that would be unforgivable. You would, you would scream bloody murder over that kind of thing if the music never picked up when the action started. I guess at the time... It was just so cool to be playing this really deep, involving, engrossing game with a unique storyline. We just didn't care about that. Nowadays, though, I go back and it was putting me to sleep. It really was. Um, 